Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to take a look at the upcoming new features of the Light Campaign V4.0. And let's get started right into it and that is going to be fast because the game is loading a lot faster now. We have um, repackaged the game and I'm happy to report that load times have come down by a f just a tiny smidge, a factor of six for spinny discs for the old one. So if it took um, if it took like three minutes to load, now it's about 30 seconds, roughly there. Of course, I need to remind you that mods will be breaking with this update because we are now in UE424. That comes with a whole load of behind the scenes upgrades and hopefully also about a third of the crash bugs that you have been uh, experiencing, maybe a bit more, maybe even half of them would disappear from just this little change which you don't even see. So, uh, apart from mods breaking, of course. So, uh, yes, um, that is all good news. It seems to be working fine. And we are now going to take a look at what is changing. I'm just really quickly going to start a new campaign here and build a first car so that I can show you the new features. Okay, just quickly build a uh, decent-ish luxury car. 180 in score and that is, of course, in easy difficulty. So. It's not really that much of a, a feat. Um, let's take a look though what is going on now in what has changed the most in this patch and that or will change the most in this patch. You don't have that yet and that is the, the factory stuff. So first page pretty similar but you already see like oh yeah, quite a few new add-ons here and there's some tooltips that are uh, helpful. And now we also see the unlock years of all these um, all these add-ons because previously you could just build them and uh, didn't even know what they were good for or worse yet they were shown as oh it would be nice to have an aluminium presses and then it wouldn't actually work um yeah because they didn't unlock yet so that is all handy um they are all showing that we do need both of these and shows you how long it's going to take and how what it's going to cost. And no, that is mega dollars, not dollars. That will be a rather cheap factory. And of course, as you can see here, we do have some more thematic, production thematic add-ons added to it. A maintenance facility, maintenance building, ah, there it is. Uh, a QA testing facility and uh, expanded offices or no expanded offices are there they're for larger factories um since staff facility really really handy and what do they do you ask um yeah well that is going to be explained on the next page really all right so you need to ignore the uh, obvious bugs for now um that is that is to be expected yet we are still sorting out the engine switch uh oh well engine upgrade and this is our new uh, production tooling and production management page. As you can see, a lot of sliders have come back that were there before but didn't do anything. And now they are all hooked up into the mechanics as well as this thing here, which has been added. All right, so what is this about? Well, now factories have building hit points. They do have uh, major tooling hit points and they have minor tooling hit points. The um, building hit points are, or the factory condition, oh, all tooltips there, um, they are always out of 100. And then the minor tooling depends on uh, the tooling quality to some extent. And what is going to happen with this, as you produce, if you for one month produce at two shifts, the minor tooling will lose two hit points. And with the minor tooling uh, degrading, your production quality will degrade as well, your build quality. And this graph is your build quality at a certain age of the factory when it's working at target shifts. That will be shifts that equals to two for the most part. And um, yes, so what you can see is various effects in here. We are starting out pretty much in the middle, slightly above the middle, because you can shift these as you see there with just tooling quality. If your quality uh, of tooling is really high, then you get higher build quality in general. If you automate more, um, the tolerances or the, the variance, I should say, the variance in production quality 
uh, is getting smaller, but also lower to some extent if you are over uh, automating. The other, on the other hand, what is true is that if your um, automation level is too low, you get a lot wider because you have so much more uh, margin for error in all those hand tasks and and that it doesn't include wanking um, and then you see that for kind of optimal middle tooling levels it gets narrower and a little high up and then it returns back there over automated is worse again so it really is now a compromise you are trying to achieve here with um, what automation levels your factory uses or needs and um, how much you're willing to pay and yeah, we can't see those numbers here right now because bug but um, yes this is a lot more in depth so what does the uh, quality threshold do i think you've seen this table before and we did have the slowdown and recall before but they weren't hooked up to anything good news is now they are hooked up to anything uh, to, <laughs> to anything to to everything even and this percentage is the chance of a batch of production being recalled for flaws. If you up your threshold, you see that where, where the cutoff is. So this is the build quality. And then the QA will find anything that is 90% of the build quality or worse. This is target spec. 100 is target spec. That is how your engineers designed it. And then you can have tighter tolerances, like engineered to higher precision, um, or not engineered to it, but produced to higher precision. And that would be build quality beyond 100. While you can get into some issues where those tolerances in production are biting your butt. And that is in this region. Everything that is below 100 can potentially cause you recalls. But the stuff that is close to 100 has a very, very low probability of doing so. And the further you get away from 100, build quality towards the lower numbers, the um, higher the chance of you getting a recall. So you can, by cutting it off, you accept slowdown and a lot of slowdown, as you can see here. 25% production penalty because these bastards down here are cutting you off. Also, you can see that at year three, when everyone in the working in the factory has gained enough experience, that is another thing that is tracked, workers gain experience for the stuff they are producing and thus become a little bit more um, adept at doing so. Uh, the build quality has risen and the margin for errors or the, the variance. <sighs> Always getting it wrong. I, I, I should know. I should know. It's the spread or variance. That's the width of the Gaussian curve. That will decrease. The width will decrease and the build quality will rise until you see in year five it's getting worse again and that is because the factory is worn now your tools are getting worn and that means that well it kind of kind of starts to suck again and these guys who are super experienced they can't do anything about it because well if you have shitty tools then what nothing helps right so um, that is how that system is working as you can see ridiculous numbers of slowdown but you reduce your recall rate quite significantly so, oh, this is also the, the old slider setting. I'm not quite sure if we want to go all the way to 100 here. I don't don't think it's too bad an option because it's kind of ridiculous. You would, at the start, you would most likely be at 50% slowdown rate. So it's not really a viable setting. In some rare instances, it might be uh, in a tiny factory, very handmade and so on, if you're going for super premium. But um, yeah, okay. So that is this system very handy especially now that it means something because we do have recalls in the game i'm going to go into that in a little bit worker wages and they are based on um on the numbers for each country of course so in ahana if you give them 20 percent more wage well, that still is pretty cheap um but it ups the quality of production and overall just means that they are uh, gaining experience a little faster also, the higher the skill, uh, the higher skill labor is, the better they um, are at manual labor. If you have a highly automated factory, your worker quality doesn't quite matter as much as when you have a um, a very not automated factory. So, uh, th this oh, you wouldn't want to build 
like that 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 is terrible also of course depends on the factory base size and so on so there's a lot of nuance in this and there will be more tooltips describing what these things are doing because that is not very transparent at the moment um all right let's go forward one more thing that has changed in the engine factory stuff oh oh here we actually have some some new things as well um we have added so operating costs as well as capital costs and these are upfront and like now split they were quite mixed up before and we do have new add-ons for the engine factories as well now you do need a casting facility and uh, that only uh, can be built on small and up at the moment so there is no such thing as a tiny engine factory anymore um, that does, just doesn't make much sense. You would always buy in engines. And that is something that is going to be in the game at some point in the future. We've already put in the well, iron foundry, that is casting. And then aluminium is for casting aluminium. And magnesium, of course, the same way as it always has been. And they also get the uh, bigger upgrades here. Uh, the uh, later ones, uh, staff facilities and so on. And now that we have taken a quick look at what uh, the, what is happening here on this final page, oh, <laughs> such a weird! What is this color scale doing? <laughs> so odd. Oh, what a nice bug. Um, I can now tell you in context what these are roughly doing. Expanded offices is procurement, and that makes it such that you um, get slightly lower material costs on your production and you require more staff, so it's more costly in that regard. Uh, but also your um, your staff works slightly more efficiently. So because the, some of the overhead work is, is being taken out and done by the office couch potatoes. And then we have the maintenance that makes that your tooling degrades, your major tooling degrades at a much slower rate. And the QA testing facility makes it such that the slowdown that you are experiencing in your production is halved. So that is very powerful as well, but it does cost a, a, a little bit, yes. And the staff facilities are basically training facilities, which make it such that your staff always starts at a, um, uh, at a higher experience level. The experience is reset with every new model or family being put in. And... Yeah, that makes it so that you don't have the worst kind of initial push and uh, for uh, initial build quality. Uh, yeah, that I think all makes sense. Uh, let's move forward. And of course, we do need to add the iron foundry. It should be high lit and like blinking. Um, but yeah, we are making a cast, a cast engine. So we need to have that. And <laughs> we also do need the graphics for that stuff. And it's all fine, it's working. And I would sign it off like this, but I do want to make sure that we are taking a look at what happens if we have too low build quality. Uh, some recalls, that is. So what I'm going to do is now sacrifice a bit of um, of build quality and get rid of, of some tooling quality and such. And who needs QA after all, right? That's... Uh, it's overrated. Well, that looks horrible. That's perfect. 6%, 7%. Uh, we should be able to get uh, get a recall that way. Every month, that is going to uh, roll, a di roll the dice and see if that batch is 40. That's how it's working. And then, it also, at that same time, decides if the, um, uh, if the issue will be found out or not. That is so that you can't save scum it. Uh, yes, that, that would be a, a prime target for it. Um, what then happens is that a little further down the line, um, a random number of months or even years down the line, you will discover that flaw. And then the, the num number of batches that are affected are going to be counted up. And uh, from there, you can then decide on how to deal with the issue. If you want to do a, um, a full recall, a partial recall, or quiet recall, or like, not, not do anything about it at all, that is also an option. All right, now I'm ready to sign off the worst build quality premium car ever conceived. Uh, there we 
have it. So 60-60, nice, agree, sign it off. And while it's running along here, let me show you on this here. It's quite empty still. I hope it's... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's already showing something, but... Ah. Hmm. There's a little buggy, but it seems to be... Uh, maybe I just need to clear my game cache. Um, let me try that. Let me try that real quick. No, unfortunately, that is not the issue. But anyway, um, new graphs incoming. And right now it looks very nondescriptive for <laughs> obvious reasons. But uh, what you're going to see soon once we are coming online with the factories and so on is that that is um, a graph that shows you all your expenses and um, uh, s split up into their contributions. Very handy as a graph to see where your money is going, and that has been a much requested feature. All right, production has just started. Probably already getting the recalls in the background firing up. Oh, 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 maybe I didn't even... <laughs> maybe I didn't even have to do that because we still have, for debugging purposes, ramped up the chances by a factor of 10. I believe that is the case, so... Basically, they're always firing right now anyway. All right, so what is going to happen here is that we have the game pause automatically because a decision needs to make, uh, be made. And engine factory and car factory after the first month fired already. All right, here we go. So it's not, not the prettiest presentation of all times, uh, that's for sure. We're going to put some more effort into that. But this is what's happening. Uh, a small production issue has been discovered. And difficulty to fix the issue is low, cost to fix the issue average, engines that are affected 3629 and we estimate that the chances of this becoming a publicly known issue are 28%. Okay, uh, three courses of action. For recall, it's the cost now, uh, the total cost if discovered and uh, well that doesn't doesn't affect you at all. Uh, if you are, uh, well, if you have dealt with the problem, then your company or reputation will not be damaged by this. A quiet recall is basically um, taking in the cars as they come in for servicing and uh, just fixing the problem. Like, keep it quiet, but you are dealing with the, um, with the issues over time. And that is kind of an in-between option. You still gain some reputation damage and prestige damage if you're being discovered, uh, but it is a lot cheaper because you don't phone up every customer and ask for permission to bring their car in uh, for a, a minor issue like this. Do nothing. Well, company reputation damage now certainly is zero, but uh, oof, if discovered, it's not looking that hot. Um, yeah, let's let's use this one. And well, the car also had an issue. <coughs> yeah, not so good. This is in our entire production so far. Um, oh, and the issue has been ongoing for two months. Ooh, this one is a little nasty. Uh, difficulty to fix the issue average, and that is also a small production issue. It's not a severe one or anything. Um, okay, cost to fix the issue is high though. A Forty percent chance to be discovered. And this chance has been rolled for already. But you don't know what the outcome will be, and you won't know until maybe years in the future. And depending on what you pick here, that will be mitigated or not. And also you can't really tell, um, well at this point you can't tell that it was happening right there, but uh, you can't tell when that event was created. So yes, we shall, uh, we shall see, what do we do here, okay. Um, Oh, stop. Stop you right there. Now. Ah, uh, that, that is also being ramped up so that we can debug. Ooh, okay. Public has discovered a small a small production issue. <laughs> that name. Oh, we have discovered your small production issue. What? what sh shame on you. Engines affected. Um, yeah. Fi fix the issue? Oh yeah, okay. You get the dialogue again. If you haven't fixed the issue before, then um, you get the uh, the the costs presented to you again and so on. Now that you've seen the recall system in action, let's take another look at the graphs. Well, that one isn't very helpful at the moment. But expenses. Look at that! 
th those are recalls, I can tell you. That is production, and this is this is car production, and this is engine production. And there are recall costs on top of that. And you see that sliding along. This was factory build costs, that's for the car, and that is for the engine, I believe, yes. And I think that is mostly what I wanted to show you today. So um, we are tying with this update up a few loose ends when it comes to production and tie that a lot more to the actual building of cars and what comes with it, like what is common in the industry and so on. Recalls, definitely something to watch out for. And build quality by itself, even if you don't get recalls, is going to affect your reputation and prestige levels, which in turn affects your um, your sales because it makes your company or your cars more desirable or less so depending on what side of the spectrum you're on all right i hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time